This video is brought to you by Miniature Market. Thousands of board games, miniatures and paints, discount prices at miniaturemarket.com. Everybody, well, you know we've had a long series going on with hate here. Um, we're adding in another guy, uh, another giant metallic guy, uh, with a couple of nuances that are a little bit different. Um, you're going to see some horns up top and stuff like that. So uh, I really look forward to bringing that to you. And then the next video, we've got a couple more beasties to do. Then we have more of the same. I may skip over some of the guys unless you guys want to see and let me know in the comments that you want to see the entire thing painted through as far as um, the big guys are concerned. Um, uh, if you want to see those videos or you want to see something else, I mean, I'm doing other videos as well. So uh, one of the things that I, I, I have here is, is, is with this particular creature is use your imagination. Uh, we add a couple of techniques that normally we don't. It's how you feel and how you want to express yourself with these miniatures. And one of the things I try to do is show you the easiest way to do it. These are layman, layman ways, forgive me, I, I don't hear myself, um, that um, to show you the easiest way to get the most out of your model. Anybody can do this. It's just a matter of you picking up the brush. Everybody has creativity. Everybody can express themselves and you can do it here as well and feel a sense of pride uh, of doing this. And I know you can do it. So let's go down to the table and see how we do our next guy from hate. All right, today we are working on this Prince. Now, uh, of course, uh, as you guys know, this almost follows the same type of blueprint that we've been following for, for the last few days. Um, basically, um, primed black, and then to get all the metal out of the way, I just decided to dry brush the entire miniature lead belcher. Because now I'll start breaking things up and putting them in. So the first thing I really kind of want to start is probably on this fur and then we'll go into his flesh and then we'll start seeing other little things that we can do to start to enhance our, our guy here. So without further ado, um, let me grab some, uh, I think we're going to go with Dry it bark. I think that's what's going to work for us best uh, just to cover the uh, brown parts and uh, let's get working on it. All right, so we're going to start on all the fur first. I think that's usually the easiest way. And just taking that nice dry it bark that really works here and just finding out, finding and identifying the fur pieces and or the uh, whatever buffalo that they decided to kill that time and uh, basically really get that on here now I'm not worried about getting anywhere on anything and most of all um, because I can do the touch-ups that I want to do um, all I want to do is just get good coverage right now just so I can break things up and know exactly where I need to be like coming up in here and so forth and so on and I'm not worried, about, again, not worried about hitting any of this plate because I know I can just touch it up later on. And uh, we've got all these skulls. I'm not worried about hitting those. Right now, it's all about getting this fur. And we will touch up some of the metallic later. But getting the fur and making sure that we cover it all and get it all is our most important agenda right off the bat. And as you see, we're going on here pretty good. All right, uh, I'm going to finish this up, and then we'll show you what we'll do next. All right, as you can see, I've already started laying in a little bit of the flesh. Nice and thin coats, and just making sure that I get it in there. And all we do is just kind of work it in there. Nice and easy. Try not to hit the metallic, but if you do, don't worry about it. We've got some spots over here that we, we can work that in. I mean, this is a pretty big dude and uh, it stands out pretty well especially on his elbows here where you're going to want to be working 
See, I got a little on that shield there, but that's okay. We're going to make that work. I'm just going to move this around a little bit. And then just come right around. I know I'm going to have to touch that shield up, so I'm not too worried about anything I'm hitting right now. And just kind of go over this a little bit. There we go. And uh, nothing on his legs or anything like that on the back side. We got, you know, we got good coverage. And uh, I'm just going to finish this up, and uh, I'm going to show you what we're going to do with this guy next. Okay, with this guy, I'm, I'm trying to not continually go over the same stuff over and over again. But um, we've, we've got all our browns in. we got all our, all our flesh in. Um, we've we're straightened up the hair. Uh, and now I'm going to take some Ushabi bone, and I'll show it to you in a minute. But we're going to go over all the skulls. And we're going to go over the horns as well. And this is, of course, you shabby bone. Um, great color for, uh, to, to get those skulls in. And boy, does he have a lot of skulls. I mean, they're all up in, up in here. And what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we cover all those. And be careful not to get the brown and everything else. And... And you really just kind of want to get everything in there. So I'm going to finish all these up. And you're going to see where all the skulls are. I'll show you. And then uh, we're going to get these horns as well with the Ushabi bone. And, uh, you know, this guy moves pretty quickly because he's mostly armor, which is really good. So this is going to be a, a really quick um, video, hopefully, if I don't keep rambling on. So we'll be back once we get all the Ushabi bone painted in all right now we're starting to get ready to put on our washes finally and all we're going to do is we want to make sure that we get some agrath earth shade and really just work it in there and you see how this just sits in there very nicely and brings out his uh, abdomen we've got his arm all the way back here we want to take care of and we're not afraid to get this on the metal or anything like that. I mean, that's okay. And we're going to work it into his armband here. And, of course, his horns. We really want to kind of get it a little thicker on there to darken it up because we're going to lighten all this up anyways. And then, of course, we got the skeletons back here, which we want to get. Uh, in his hair don't worry about getting it in his hair because his hair is black and we're going to dry brush the hair as well as a few other things here so it's going to look like junk right now but just you got to trust me you got to trust me on this one we'll definitely get out of this and we'll really get this to really stand out so i'm going to finish up moving around this wash and then we'll come back once it's dry and then we're going to add another layer of wash on and then we're going to start to build out and that's where we're really going to see this this figure start to come to life okay now that we got all the bone set and you can see how that's sitting what we're going to do is take some new oil but we're not going to overcome it with new oil like we normally would do um, what we just want to do is hit certain areas not so much to darken them down, but to give them a certain amount of depth. See how that all just sits in that recess? That's all I want to do. Just go lightly over this, this uh, shield. The other thing is, is that what we're trying to accomplish here is really to have the metal sit up on this particular guy because we're just going to want to add a little shadow that's all i'm trying to do here but for the most part i just want that metal to get enough of this wash where i can get it to sit up correctly and i'm trying to be careful here it doesn't matter if i get it on the hair because we're going to dry brush the hair so coming across here is fine the other part is is that watch how watch how this works here and just it gives that shadow it gives that illusion and that's exactly what we're trying to do I can even add a little in here to make that a little darker as we go to bring that out 
and uh, of course these horns here which are pretty important because it's a centerpiece of his of, of just who he is uh, just a bad guy with a bunch of horns on his head right <sighs> and then just to come back here a little bit and do the same thing with some of the the metal right in here and just get that to sit right where we want it to and it'll be pretty nice to make sure we do the back side of the weapon I always forget to do the back side uh, you know you look at the front and you go oh that looks good and then you forget about it because it's done and then later on you're like oh man I forgot to do that don't forget to do that part and I want to be careful not to hit these skulls as you see these skulls are looking pretty good but when we lighten them up they're even gonna they're even gonna be stronger and that's that's a, another benefit and you know we're pretty close here with this guy but we're gonna do some things that we normally don't do and I want to show you guys and uh, we're just gonna add a little bit of things that we normally don't do so I'm gonna let this dry and uh, then what we're gonna do is move on to the next step all right the next thing that we want to do here is basically we want to hit um, I've been using this terminus stone and I really think that it's really really good um, for really come going over some of these uh, skulls so what you want to do is just very 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 gingerly go over it and kind of just dry brush those things be careful not to get it into to the uh, hair here and I think it just really stands out and really brings these things to light and that's all we're trying to do is just really just make these skulls really excel a little bit not taking away a lot of detail and this is a dry brush paint that you can get from GW and it really just does wonders it really does and you see the effect that you get which is really really nice um, another skull over here I mean this dude's got skulls all over him. they all seem to have a lot of skulls so uh, I think they take a lot of pride in their kills basically and then these horns here I want to start at the top here and I really just kind of want to pull pull it towards me I want to give it a bit of a shine but I, I mean a, a lighter point but I want to leave some of that wash in there to really <clears throat> exemplify the, or, or really have that those horns kind of just stand out and just give that feel that you know not all it's not, just not one color it's a multicolored dimension there if that's even a thought <laughs> So um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to touch up a few other things and then what we're going to do is we're going to come back and I'm going to show you what we're going to do next because we're almost there in the home finish here. The next thing that we want to do is we're going to take a little long beard gray and we're going to work it into more of the um, fur here than anything else and I just it has to be so light because if you go too crazy with it it's going to drown out that brown and that's not what we're looking for we're looking to give a nice highlight here we're not looking to paint anything and you can see how it just it sits up correctly right here also we painted a little etching gray into these corners here and we can go over that very lightly again we're not worried about getting it over onto um, onto the metal because again we're going to go over the metal but we really want to try to stay away from the metal as much as we can that's why we're using like a smaller flat edge brush to work this into because it just it's going to help us in the long run and come over the top here I want to I want to make sure that I hit over in here onto his hair a little bit because we're going to play around with that a little bit not too much but just making sure that we get highlights and right in the front here as you can see we're really just working this color in and it's just giving us a little more depth and that's all we're looking for just a little bit more to kind of really dig out some some depth here remember flat colors don't just work they don't work you need something to kind of sell that whole whole point that this is what your your model is 
it looks like it's real almost in some ways I'm just taking a little bit of that and working that in there and you see he's sta starting to stand out really well all right it's time to really bring this metal out so let's uh head over and do some uh well you know it necron compound All right, this is probably one of the most important parts, and that's using a Necron compound, which is a dry. We've been using a lot of dry uh, paints, and I really think that they help immensely. But you can see by just coming over some of these edges and not taking out and being careful and nice and easy, you see how that brings that metal out. And that's what we're trying to do is bring some life to this and really make it stand out a bit and you could do that with these with these dry with these wonderful wonderful windows you see how that see how that the mesh all of a sudden just comes alive it really does and you can really just get a fantastic result over the top of these spikes you know these are these are things that are just going to help you excel with this now now watch this watch how this works just hitting the edges and it gives you that depth that you're looking for all right because it makes the metal feel real and that i think is just wonderful and you, you want to be real careful with the hair here you don't want to hit the hair and we're going to come back to that hair in a bit um, just coming over this and going over all these edges makes a world of difference. I'm going to finish this up. You're going to see exactly what I'm going for. And then uh, we, will, we will continue on. Well, unfortunately, um, <laughs> my, my big finish video uh, didn't tape uh, because I didn't hit the, the, the play button. So I was talking to myself for a good 10 minutes. So I want to show you what I did here. Um, I actually put... Uh, using some Evil Sun Scarlet, some braids into his hair. And then I did something new, and it was something I wanted to talk about, um, that that you don't need to overkill it. Now, I'm not a big fan of putting blood on there, but we have Blood for the Blood God. And this is a very, very um, unique and, and very good paint. Some people like to cover their models with blood. I think less is more. So if you look right here, I just put some dots of that there. I want to give the, not the illusion, but the effect that this is a battle-tested weapon in, in many ways. And that, you know, they're in the middle of a battle. And just the slightest hints of it, I think, instead of covering the weapon full of blood and everything like that, just a little bit, I think less is more there. And we put that on there. And, you know, pretty much, there you go, there you have it. I mean real easy paint job a lot of fun very enjoyable and i really enjoyed working with this particular figure uh we're going to be moving on to a couple other things and uh we're just going to keep pounding away at hate until we are completely finished and i think this is just a fun and the the miniatures are absolutely beautiful so without further ado i want to thank you all for watching this and until next time it's your old pal rob we will see you soon